but to the PG Bison Gallery 3 Roadshow. It's really exciting to have everyone on board today. Uh, we've done uh, numerous of these webinars this past week in that, and they've been really successful in that. So really, thank you for joining us, and thank you take, for taking of your time to join us today. Just an introduction, I'm Justin Berry. I'm the Sales and Marketing Executive for the PG Bison Group. I'm joined by Jason Wells. He is our Marketing and Brand Manager for the PG Bison Group. He's the guy that picks all the colors, chooses the names, and hopefully he's going to get you as excited as we are about the new color ranges and products that we're launching today. So as I said, thank you for joining us. Just uh, quickly from a webinar perspective, some rules. We've joined you without your video and we've muted you, obviously. It just makes it easier from a bandwidth perspective and to ensure that we can have the presentation, you can listen to us. If you go to the bottom of your screen, if with your mouse, there's a Q&A section there. Uh, and if there's any questions that you have for us as we go through the presentation, please just post them there. I will be responding to them as Jason talks. But at the end of the presentation, we do have a Q&A section there and we'll deal with some frequently asked questions that we picked up from other webinars and we'll deal with any other questions which I may have not responded to in writing over the, over the period of the presentation. So from our side, thanks for joining us again. It's really great to have you on board. From PG's perspective, we like having physical interaction with people's people. We really like enjoying and being with our, our customers and our customers' customers and that. And for us, this is a, a new era. It's that we've had to think about doing business differently. It's not business as usual anymore. And we had planned this massive roadshow getting on the road, getting out to the market. And as I said, we really enjoy those uh, physical interactions with you out there. But uh, life changed and uh, we had to adapt to that. I've been really happy with what our market, how our marketing team has responded to this. And I think you'll see what we had to have to present you today is really exciting. And we'd, we'd love to have been showing it to you physically, but I think from a digital perspective, this does work well. As I said, we've had great feedback. And I think it's something that is going to become part of the future of how we engage with the markets and communicate with markets on new products, innovations, different ideas that we have in it. So look, look forward to uh, uh, seeing future communication from PG Bison. I think we will start having regular monthly webinars on that. And I think it will become a nice platform, one of, one of the communication platforms that we use going forward in that. We do understand as PG Bison that it's a very difficult time for the industry and that. Please don't feel alone. Uh, I know sometimes people feel that they're the only ones going through it. We're all experiencing very challenging times. It's challenging our management abilities and that. It's challenging what we thought was the norm and that. And we're all having to adapt to it. But PG Bison's always been a company that wants to hold your hand through this and be, be there with you. So please engage with us, talk to us. Uh, we really want to be part of the solution and we do want to see this industry survive into the future. Something that you'll see in the presentation we're really proud of. We joined the Proudly South African initiative. Uh, this was a couple of months, about eight months ago, we had joined up in that. We're really proud that we've seen that our products have been audited and 95% of all our raw materials that go into making up our products are locally sourced and locally procured. So that's really something to be proud of. And I think it's something that we all need to think of going forward as, as this economy starts reawakening and that, how can we all in our own small part contribute to uh, ensuring jobs, local jobs? How do we contribute to getting this economy kickstarted again? And I think that's something that we all gonna have to do is when we make purchase decisions, Look at the label, look at the point of origin in that. And if you have a choice, buy South African, buy local. And as I say, local is lacquer. So I think that's something that we can all do. So for without any further ado, I'd like to hand you over to the ringmaster, Jason. He's been locked up for seven weeks now. Every time I talk about it, it's like another week's been added. Uh, he's excited to share, share with the market on what he's been working on. And it hasn't been just a short seven-week period. This has been a labor of love for the last two years since we had our last roadshow, the new roadshow preparation begins. So Jason, over to you. Thank you very much, Justin. Thank you for the intro. Okay. 
what I'm going to do now is just quickly share my screen and then we will begin. Okay, so Justin's taken care of the intros and now I'll get us into the Gallery 3 digital launch. Welcome everybody. Thank you for taking the time this afternoon to come and join us, listen to what we have to say. And Justin's right, we are really excited about this. We, we are, you know, it's a labor of love and we're happy to share it with you now. It's incredible to think how rapidly things have changed. I know it's almost becoming a little bit blase now, but think back. I mean, in November of 2019, we had a plan. We were going to travel around South Africa and the SADC, and we were ready to, we were going to build sets, booked accommodation, we'd booked venues, we'd booked flights. Everything was set, ready to go for us to move around the country. And come in and show you these new products. That was our plan in November, December, January, we were still had that plan. February, we were working towards that plan. We were cutting samples and getting ready. March, first week on our way. Second week of March, still on our way. Third week of March, not on our way anymore. Everything changed, the world changed. And of course we went into lockdown on the 26th of March. And that really, you know, stretched our brains and, and we had to apply our minds to how are we going to adapt to that and what are we going to do differently. Now, as I get into the talk today, I'm going to break it up into three sections for you. First section, I'm going to talk about the concept, the theme behind the launch. If you were at our Gallery 2 launch in 2018, you'll remember the theme was Authentic You. There were the four chapters, Explorer You, Urban You, Natural You, and Sensual You. So I'm going to give you the 2020 theme, discuss the thinking behind that, and then I'm going to get into four chapters again, but these four chapters, I'm going to focus on four specific product groups and all the new stuff we're bringing to those product groups. And then I'll wrap up the talk with the digital tools and the physical tools that we've developed to help inspire your customers and your staff and help you to sell these products. So that's how we'll look at the, this today. So I'll start off with this little quote to really just get us into the idea, give you a couple of seconds to read that quote. So like we said, you know, unprecedented times. None of us have, have lived through this where the entire economy was shut down. Just close your shops, lock the doors, go home. Thank you very much. We'll let you know when you can start again. None of us have ever experienced anything like that. And it's frightening. I mean, we've seen a lot of big companies that have gone into business rescue and, and just have to say, well, we're not going to reopen. So that's quite incredible. And in this moment, when we start to think about survival, you know, we're programmed to think of survival as it's the fittest that survive, the fastest, the smartest, the biggest, the one with the most resource. Those are all the things we kind of assume are what you need to be able to survive. And what this quote's really about is saying, none of that really matters unless you have the ability to adapt to change. And that's the most important thing we can do is we're given this, this unique opportunity to really think about our businesses, look at how we do stuff, and how are we going to adapt and move forward? Because if we're just sitting around waiting for things to get back to normal, there's a real strong possibility we will be left behind because it's not going back to normal. This is a transition phase. We're going from what we were into what we're going to be. And it's how we transition and how we use this opportunity to really re reflect and change what we do. And that's what we're doing today. That's what this is all about. That brings us into our 2020 theme, change. Now, I've been saying this you know, a little bit the tongue in cheek. No, we're not as fast as Nando's. We're not as smart as Nando's. We didn't think about this last weekend and thought, hey, change is a great topic for, for this launch. We'd actually refined this topic in November last year. And it's amazing how at the time we were thinking of change in terms of change your showroom, change your kitchen, change the way we sample, change all the colors. But in the last few weeks, this topic change has just taken on a different level of relevance. All of a sudden, it is all about change. How are we going to change and what are we going to do at a fundamental level? That's the important thing. So it's, it's easy to say, yeah, change is good. You know, yeah, change is good. It's not being glib about it. It's a scary time. It, it's an uneasy time. It's, it's certainly an, an uncertain time for a lot of people. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what the new normal will look like. But the most important thing we can do is be ready to adapt to that change. And let's not just wait in the past, hoping that things will get back to normal. So there we have it. That's the theme for 2020. It's change. 
And again, what we've had to do, it may have felt like the world suddenly stopped on the 26th of March, everything just came to a grinding halt. But in the background, the conceptualizing, the thinking, the inspiration, none of that stopped. You know, we've been working really hard to just try and think about what are we going to do differently and how are we going to take this launch to the market? We don't have the option of physical roadshow anymore. So what can we do differently? And here we are today celebrating this. So welcome to our Gallery 3 digital launch. So there you have it. That is my intro. The theme for this year is change. We're going to celebrate that change. And now I'm going to use these four chapters to talk to you about the four product groups and how we're doing different things in there. Now, if I was in your city and I was up on stage talking about it, I'd use these chapters to discuss the trends, the fashion, where our colors going. But because of this platform, as I say, we're going to just keep it focused straight on the products. Our first chapter, seasons. So at a high level, Seasons is the trend for us that deals about the natural colors, the earthy tones, the hug from Mother Nature. It's the sort of colors that people naturally gravitate towards in times of uncertainty. Inside of Seasons, I'm going to talk specifically about Mellowood and all the new stuff we're doing there. So as a reminder of 2018, Gallery 2, what did we launch? We launched 10 Mellowood designs at that point. There were the two solid colors, Petrol Blue and Congo. And there were eight wood grains. It was Brookhill, Lockport, Greythorn, Haven, Bardo, Arden, Vence, and Camden. All eight colors there. Done exceptionally well for us. Really, Brookhill, Lockport, straight out the starter's gate, gone. You know, they've been flying. Now we're seeing the colors like Vardo, Arden, Vence really coming to their own people, discovering them, getting excited about them, and using those. So really good performance from those colors. Justin mentioned this is a two-year process. So from us launching... We get into this two-year cycle and then we launch again. And the way it, it all played out was our roadshow started in February in South Africa. We traveled around South Africa. We went through the SADC and we finally wrapped up in Nairobi and Kenya in September of 2018. That was our final roadshow. And we just got home from that and we jumped straight onto an airplane again. We were off to Italy and Turkey and we were starting to look for what's new and exciting. What are we going to launch in 2020? And that's when the work began. And during that time, analyzing our range, having a look at all the different stuff that was happening, one of the things that I became aware of is continued strong growth in solid colors. Year on year, we're just seeing these solid colors growing. And anyone who's been around for a while will remember Back in the day, it was always just about wood grains and super white. That was your, your options. Nowadays, iceberg white, cappuccino, congo, petrol blue, storm gray, folkstone gray, all these colors are being used all over the place. And it's as a result of people wanting to two-tone, so mixing and matching, solid color carcassing. So just wanting to have that more exclusive look and more than just a white carcass, give it something extra with a bit of color and going straight back to unicolor kitchens, using one color throughout. So, all of those trends are helping drive this performance in solid colors. Something to bear in mind as I talk about what we're going to launch now. So of course, we didn't want to just bring the same old, same old. We wanted to just have something new and exciting to really kind of give the range another boost. And after all our work, I'm really happy to tell you that in 2020, we're launching seven new Mellowood designs. They're going to be two exotics. I'll explain those now. And five solid colors, really on-trend solid colors. You know, in analyzing the, the range, we could see there were a few gaps. This was the perfect opportunity for us with this growth in solid colors to find those alternatives. What we're not going to be doing is launching any wood grains. And we don't want to cannibalize what we launched in 2018. They're doing really well, they're performing well, and we don't want to confuse the market and, and sort of cause complications by adding more wood grains to that. So that's going to stay. No wood grains coming in in 2020. We're sticking to a one color, one finish approach. It's really working. It's working for us from a supply chain and a planning point of view. It's working for our stockists from a stock holding and investment point of view. And I think it's working for everyone out there, contractors, installing kitchens. It helps them. There's nothing more frustrating than you've got stock on your floor of a certain design in a finish and the consumer, the customer walks in with a sample of the same color, but a different finish. Now you have to try and convince them that your finish is as good or, or things like that. So really, the, the more we can make sure that we launch a color in a specific finish and it stays in that finish, the better it is for everyone in the market. So we're doing that. We're not going to discontinue any Mellowood designs in 2020. So if anyone out there in, in the market says, oh no, PG's discontinued that, no, nothing is coming out of the range in 2020. Here's the logic behind that decision. 
because right now the range is in a really healthy state. So when we look at what we want to discontinue, we have two options available to us. We look at the colors that are declining year on year. I'm not just talking about a little dip. Every year we're losing more and more volume. That's one option. Other option, look at the bottom of the range. What is selling small volumes and it just hasn't taken off yet? So like I say, we are faced with quite a nice problem to have. Millwood range is in a really healthy state. We've done a lot of work back in 2016 and 2017 pruning that range. Now, what we're faced with is the declining colors. Well, those are still the big volume colors that represent a, a large volume for us. Natural oak, Vancouver maple, Bergen mahogany, black cherry. Year on year, they are declining, but still we sell too much of that to take them out of the range. So they have to stay. At the other end of the range, the small stuff, well, that's all the new stuff we've just launched in 2018. So it'd be unfair to now take that out of the range. You know, the Bardos, Arden, Ventures, they're just starting to grow. So it wouldn't sit well for us to suddenly say, well, those are out the range now. So we have to leave everything in as is, and that's how we're going forward. But in 2022, we'll be certainly making some changes then. That means that the Millwood range expands from 36 designs to 43 designs, quite a wide range. Now, you have to appreciate that we're servicing an international market. We have an export sales manager and his team actively looking for markets around the world. They're traveling all the way up through Africa. We're into Australia. Anywhere they can find a place to sell board, we're selling it. Now, we have to have a range that caters for that wide and diverse taste. And even in South Africa, between Joburg and Cape Town and Durban and Polokwane and Bloemfontein, tastes are different. People are looking for different things. It's never just a cut and paste that the same color works all over in, the, in different places. So really, we have to be able to cater, as I say, for that diverse taste. So the message to the market is stock what works for you. Really, we know it's a wide range. So find the colors that are great for you in your region and use those colors. Obviously, we're hoping we've done a really good job and they're all good colors and you want to stock them all, but just focus on what works for you. Before we get into the colors, Justin's mentioned this. I'm going to just talk a little bit about it. Locally manufactured, if we as a country are going to kickstart an economy, one thing we have to do is focus on buying local. Every bit of product that we import is a job we send overseas. It's money we send overseas. And if we want to keep our economy going, we really need to keep that money in our own economy. So it's about supporting proudly South African companies and everyone who's manufacturing and really doing stuff in this country, back those companies. Of course, dependable quality and consistency Hallmark of PG Bison, I think we've always sort of aimed to set that bar high and achieve that and keep that quality consistent. So another thing to be proud of in PG. Last bit before I get into the colors, very exciting bit of news, antibacterial additive. We're going to be putting an antibacterial additive into the Mellowood range. Now, before you rush off and phone President Ramaphosa, stop, stop, stop. We have not got the cure for COVID-19. This is not going to stop COVID-19. Okay. this is an antibacterial additive and COVID-19 is viral, so it's two different things. But the important thing is, at the moment, in this market that we have, this environment that we're in right now, there is a heightened sensitivity to hygiene, cleaning regimes, sanitizing surfaces. We've had a lot of inquiries, and this is something we've been working on for quite some time, but it's just fortuitous that we're bringing it out now. Obviously, a lot of inquiries about this sort of product where people are just sensitized to hygiene is looking for something like this. Now, Mellowood, melamine is already a really good barrier to microbial growth. You know, it's a, it's a completely sealed surface. When we press the boards, that resin has to close that entire surface up. So nothing's going to penetrate that and start to grow there anyway. That surface is sealed. What this does is it's just that top-up insurance. It's, it's that one more selling point to say, and with antibacterial additive. Okay, how we do it? It's blended into the resin when we're going to treat the paper to press onto the board. So we don't coat the product on afterwards. It's nothing like that. It's part and parcel of the product. It's in the resin and then pressed into the board. So that's how, how we get it in there. So it's not going to sort of evaporate over time. It kills 99% of the known bacteria. And we have the specs and all that for this. We'll be putting those up on our website. So that's a, that's a great thing. When bacteria gets onto the surface of Mellowood, it basically kills it within six hours. So it can't spread too far. Where's it going to go? Just into the Mellowood range. We're not going to take this into the Bison Lamb range. It's, we're focusing it only on the Mellowood range. And why is it not going into the Premier range? Well, because the, the coating the, that we put onto the board afterwards stops a lot of that uh, effectivity. So it's in the Mellowood range. And the benefit of that is by just keeping it in the Mellowood range, there's no additional cost for it. We are able to manage that ourselves. Of course, if we started to try and extend it to the Bison Lamb range, then it starts to, to impact on the costing because of the volume we're talking about. 
But just by keeping it in the 43 Mellowood designs, we are able to say at no extra cost to you, here is this added benefit of antibacteria. A lot of excitement, a lot of people looking for this product. You have to just hold on and you'll hear a couple of the things that we've been excited about then want to get them into the market. But where we are because of the lockdown, there's a little bit of a delay. The antibacterial additive, we had just got it prior to the lockdown. Now with the startup and of course with the, our value chain, a lot of people being at 30%, a lot of people not being allowed to work yet, the product hasn't started to move into the channel. We've got to still clear out all the product that's in, in the reseller uh, channel as well as our own warehouses. So once that starts moving through, we can start our own lines up, the production lines, and start producing more product, then it'll move in. So we're looking at about two to three months before the antibacterial additive will actually start flowing into the market. So it's coming, just be there in a, in a couple of months time, just be ready for it. And when it does, we'll actually indicate it on the boards. We'll have a, a, a little printed label on the side of the boards and on the stack labels, just telling you that the product contains an antibacterial additive. So really exciting news there. With all that, out of the way, let's get into what we're here for, the actual colors. So our two exotics, Stone Town and Anchor Point. Stone Town, we've been looking for a design like this for quite some time, but trying to find the right design. I'm pleased to say we've now got Stone Town and we've done a lot of work on this, developing this design ourselves. So spend time with the printers, choosing that wood grain, choosing that concrete and getting the gray color just right. For those of you who've ever dealt with printers, you'll understand gray, is actually quite a tricky color. You know, it, it can very quickly take on a different color hue when you two-tone it, when you put it side by side with something else. It can look a little bit greeny and or yellowy. So we really try hard to make sure that it stays nice and neutral and gray as you see it there. So like I say, it's this concrete wood combination, a fairly rustic look. If you're doing concrete shuttering and you use a rough timber sort of to, to do the shuttering and when you pull that timber away, you're left with that embossed finish of the wood grain on the concrete. That's the look we're going for over here. Stone Town is in a linear finish. That finish helps to complement that rustic design, really make it come alive. And we're launching Stone Town into our value price band. Now, anyone who doesn't know, the way we price our Melwood, there are three tiers. There's our demand price band, the top band, value, cost effective, and then accent for all our solid colors. So we're putting Stone Town straight into our value price band. Anchor point on our right, an oxidized metal. It's that sort of earthy color I was talking about under seasons, really the, those autumn colors coming through there. What I love about Anchor Point is if you get a piece in your hands, you'll see that there's actually patches of blue in there. There's patches of beige and of gray. There's the dark browns. And again, it just helps with that mixing and matching and playing around with other colors for two-toning. So you can put petrol blue in super gloss next to it. It looks incredible. You can put it next to Congo. It looks amazing. Next to one of the grays. It, really just comes alive. So it really has a lot of versatility in it. Anchor Point is in a natural touch finish to give you that sort of metal plate feel. And we're putting Anchor Point into our demand range price band. So there you have it. Stone Town, Anchor Point, really exciting designs. Like I say, a lot of people looking for different colors, different materials now to mix and match with. And we think these are two exciting options as opposed to just wood grains. We're doing five solid colors. First one, Pico White Strata Finish. I'm not going to talk too much about that now because I've got a second slide about that. I'm going to get set into the second one, which is Biscra. Now you'll see all our sample swatches have that little disclaimer on them. It says, you know, color may vary, check the real thing before you make a decision. And, you know, in this day and age, everyone's on computer screens, but all computer screens are different. They all show color differently. It's, it's incredible in this process, just when we are busy with brochure work and, and getting the designs ready, you look at it on one person's screen, it looks closer to the color. Another person's screen doesn't look like the color. So we have to be careful with that. But we're looking at it right now on the screen. So I'm going to tell you, you really do need to see the sample. We'll talk about samples now. Because right now you might be looking at it and thinking, it looks very much like Congo, but it actually is nothing like Congo at all. It's a completely different color. It's this tan beige sort of color and really does a, a good job of working with the other wood grains in our range. So Biskra, for those of you who need to know, it's nicknamed, well, it's named after a town in Algeria, and that town's nickname is the gateway to the Sahara. So this being a Sahara sand brown sort of color, this girl we thought was a, a great name for that. It's coming out in a peened finish. Following on from Biskra, Karaz. Karaz is a duck shell green. 
it's really a color of the moment. It's a trending right now. We saw a lot of this sort of color coming through at the trade fairs overseas. And in fact, while we were getting ready to put together our physical roadshow and our team was out there buying the utensils to, to dress the sets, what we saw was a lot of the home stores were carrying utensils in this kind of duck shell green color already. So really a great color, Carraz and a peen finish. Following on from Carraz, we've got Dunblane Gray. Again, one of those colors where people sometimes say, oh, but you've got Folkestone, completely different. A lot of requests coming from the market for a, a bit more grayness. You know, often we find that Folkestone Gray is just a little bit too light, Storm Gray, just a little bit too dark. We needed something right in the middle. And that's Dunblane Gray, really a, a Goldilocks sort of story. It's, it's just perfect. So if you put the three samples side by side, you're gonna see a really nice step change from a light gray to a medium gray in Dunblane to a darker gray in Storm Gray. And really a beautiful color. I think we're gonna see a lot of activity around Dunblane Gray. And our final color coming in is Kalapana. And Kalapana is an extension of this Goldilocks story. Sometimes Storm Gray is just too light and Super Black is just too dark. And Kalapana, nice and perfect in the middle of the two of them. Uh, this classic, as I say, carbon color. A lot of people are looking to do sort of darker uh, applications now, you know, more sophisticated look and feel. And super black can often be a little bit too much, a little too overbearing. Where now with the Kalapana, you have a great dark, dark color. You know, this really strong gray color coming through that isn't all the way over at black. So really an exciting color there. Carbon color, Kalapana is its name. Now, as promised, Pico White, the fifth color. Again, a lot of this is based on feedback from the market. So we, we try and see where we can sort of accommodate those things. And we've had many people looking for a little bit of a whiter, cleaner white. Now we're not talking about stark, brilliant white as in iceberg white. That's a different sort of white. It's just taking the super white and making that a little bit whiter. So the way we've done that is through two things. We've one, invested in a strata plate, this brand new plate. Now. If anyone knows, I mean, well, everyone knows the, the peen plate. It's got that sheen to it. It's a little bit like polished up. We had to try and take that down. And that's what we did with the strata plate. We matted it out, flattened that surface, created a bit more of a modern finish. So the strata finish, and then we've complemented that with the Pico white paper. So Pico white, we've had to do a bit of investment in terms of our technology, the pigments and the impregnation process when we get resin into the paper to create that deeper, cleaner white. And We've been able to do that here. So now if you take up a sample of Bison Lamb Super White alongside a sample of Pico White with a strata finish, you'll see just how much cleaner that and whiter that Pico White looks. It really just radiates a more modern sort of look. We're going to price Pico White into our accent price range. So remember, we've got demand, value, and accent for our solid colors. Pico White strata finish into the accent price band because this is not meant to be a commodity price fighter going up against Bison Lamb Super White. We don't intend that to happen at all. This is just for somebody who's looking for that little bit extra, and of course it's priced accordingly. So a whiter white and a modern, more matte finish, luxury for the eye and comfort for the pocket. That's Pico White. And just like our antibacterial additive, I have to let you know, unfortunately, Pico White is another victim of COVID-19. We said we invested in a new plate finish. We have. We have bought the plates, they had manufactured the plates in, in Germany for us, they had packed and strapped them, they even got them as far as the airport, they got delivered to the airport, and that was literally the same week that we went into lockdown. So where we would have had the plates arrive here and got them into production so we'd be ready for our physical launch, the plates ended up getting held up at the airport, and of course with no air traffic happening, we've had to put them on a boat now, so they are being shipped down to South Africa. So we're still about seven to eight weeks away from Pico White arriving in South Africa, and then we'll be able to start, well, not Pico White, but the, the strata plate finish arriving in South Africa, and then we'll be able to get into production and start supplying this into the market. Unfortunate, but that's just the way it is. So there you have it. Those are the seven designs coming into the Mellowood range. Now we get on to our second chapter, and that is Switch. So inside of Switch, we're talking about the bold, the decisive, not living life in half measures. This is a continuation of switching from rural to urban, you know, moving from the, the countryside into the bright lights and big cities, switch. Inside of switch, we're gonna talk about Formica Life Seal as a product. As a reminder, 2018, we launched five Formica Life Seal designs. It was downtown, the texture, that gray sort of concrete look, and then we had the four gloss tops. 
Aquila, Tucana, Cygnus, and Carina. The black and the blue and the two dark brown sort of colors. That was them. Really done exceptionally well. Market's loving them. This is another product that at this moment, in this environment that we're facing, with a growing awareness of hygiene and, and, and the sensitivity to cleaning regimes and sanitizing, another great selling point is, of course, for Formica's non-porous, easy-to-clean surface. So really something to be focusing on at this moment. So for 2020, we're going to be launching four Formica Lifestyle designs. Two gloss and two textures. Our market still loves gloss tops. We understand that. But we're also trying to create some excitement around other more interesting textures, and I'm going to show you what those are now. We're also finish, focusing on a one color, one finish approach. It's working well in the Mellowood range. We want to try and do the same in the Formica range. And for that reason, we're going to be discontinuing four designs in 2020. And those four designs are Maron Textured, Mocha Granite Textured, Raven Slate Textured, and Rosetta Textured. I emphasize Textured because we've had a few people get a little bit excited and say, oh, but Maron's doing well, or Rosetta's doing well. Yes, they are. They're doing really, really well, but as gloss tops. The gloss sells 92% of the volume. The textured version sells about 8% of the volume. So it doesn't make sense to hang on to those two designs, take up space in the range where we could really let them go and find other more exciting colors to come in and do a better job. So they have to go. Mocha Granite, that's one of those designs that just year on year are now declining, and it's time to say goodbye. Again, the textured version, the gloss version, doing exceptionally well, that stays. And Raven Slate as a texture. This, unfortunately, the supplier from overseas has let us know that they are discontinuing the color, and so we have no choice but to take it out of our range too. So for Mike, as I mentioned, what it offers us, easy to clean, hygienic surface, a stylish and up-to-date range. And again, it's, it's one of those that I think we've done a lot of work to just really get this range starting to look more exciting again, you know, reinvigorate it, um, re-energize it. A couple of years ago, when Moss Granite and Fastag Granite and Men's Oak were the most exciting designs, it was looking a bit tired and stale. But I think since we've started with the Saxon Oaks and Woodland Fusions, Cristels, Catalans, all these colors really helping to just get people excited about the product again and get them using it. And now the five we did last year, doing really, really well. And I'm sure when you see the four new ones, they're going to do exceptionally well for us too. Locally manufactured, as I say, it's a product that we, we produce here in South Africa. We have to start supporting local stuff if we're going to get the economy going. And affordability. Affordability on two levels. We often hear when people are talking about installing kitchens or upgrading kitchens, it's the cost of the work surface that puts them off the job. You know, it can be quite an expense just in the work surface alone. So here we have a really good looking cost effective option that I think it should just really be a, a, a selling point that we focus on now. And an affordability point of view, well, in terms of cash flow, this product helps the contractor to keep a lot of the money in their own business. Because so often when you're dealing with these sort of speciality work services, you end up having to subcontract to a stonemason or somebody else to come and fabricate and install that work service. Here, by using a Formica worktop, it keeps that money in their own business. Again, it comes down to a good installation. I know often people are, are a little apprehensive about how long is it going to last. There are guidelines about if we install the tops properly, they will perform as well as everything else. There you have it. So let's make the switch and see what those four colors are. Firstly, we have Vento Blue. Beautiful color. The sample on your screen, that's about a 600 by 600 that we're looking at right now. So you've got to imagine it a little bit bigger, those veins a little bit more open than that. It's based on a sandstone design. So it's got this really soft and elegant vein running down the length of the top. I love Vento Blue because it's got an overall blue sort of tone to it. But inside of it, there are a little bit of pink and a little bit of beige, a little bit of gray. And again, just helps to pick up on other colors in the range and mix and match so well. So Vento Blue, that's in a gloss finish. Following on Vento Blue, we have Tora. So Tora is named after a little town on the Namibian coast. And this is a sort of driftwood look, that washed out, sun bleached, grayed out kind of a, a feel to it. Real sort of natural looking colors. Tora, we're putting into a textured finish. Now, when I say textured, I'm not talking about low glare or glaze. You know, again, one of those things that I think make the tops look so much more plasticky. We found a really good wood grain texture and we're putting it into that. So that texture really just helps to complement the design, make it come alive. And that's what we're doing with Tora. And then we've got Kinloch. Again, when you first see Kinloch, you just see this very dark top. 
but the longer you look at it, the more you're going to see it, the grays coming forward, the browns coming forward. There's a little bit of blue in there. So again, just a lot of color inside of there that helps you to play around with the other sort of wood grains and solid colors in our range and mix and match. And I'm amazed by this color in particular. We have a wall of samples in our offices. And when we want to bring something into the range, we take the new sample and we walk it down the wall and see sort of where does it fit in the range and what does it mix and match with. And Kinloch really just picks up on a lot of colors in, in the range and just an incredible finish. So this stone brickworks pattern, the way we've pushed this forward is we found a really brand new as a finish, a really interesting sort of rougher stone texture, really complements the design and, and just gives it that realism to it. So Kinloch in a stone texture. And then finally, we've got Moreno. So Moreno is based on a slate. It's these overall gray sort of tones, and it's in a gloss finish. Now, Moreno, really an exciting design. It, for me, is when I'm going around the country and asking people their opinions and sort of what is going to get into the range, you know, often it can be polarizing and people choose one color or another color. But Moreno is that sort of color that it didn't matter where I went in the country, most people gravitated towards it. So it, it tells me that it's got a universal appeal and I think we'll see a lot of excitement around it. So Merino in a gloss finish, really a, a stunning design. So those are our worktops. We're gonna move on to our third chapter, evolution. Before I do that, I just wanna point out to you that of course nobody had stock at the time of us putting this together because we were all in lockdown. So we had to do a little bit of work in the background and we Photoshopped Moreno into this picture so you can just get a sense of what it looks like. So there's Moreno as a worktop in application. The evolution. As a trend, this is about the subduing, calming down, getting rid of distractions, just really focusing inwards. In terms of colors, it's the calmer, lighter colors. It's the slow march of time, just that consistent march in the background. Inside of evolution, we're going to talk about Miller with Supergloss. So Mellowood Supergloss as a product group for us has done exceptionally well. Month on month, better and better sales. Incredible performance. I think as people get to use it and sort of see how easy it is to fabricate with it, they get more confident with it, they wanna use it more often. Really, we've just seen that coming through. And of course it has a beautiful effect, especially in smaller areas where it bounces light and, and really helps to open up that space. So it's so a really great product. So I don't have a lead-in slide. I'm not going to give you all the facts and figures. I'm just going to talk to you about the range and how are we moving it, and I'll show you those colors. So we have 13 designs currently. There's two wood grains and 11 solid colors. The wood grains are American Walnut and Coimbra, and of course, 11 solid colors. Now, with this nominal performance, the time was right for us to really evolve this range, really kick it forward. And we're going to move this range from 13 designs to 22 designs. That's quite a big jump, but it's an exciting product and it really deserves a lot more attention on its range. So let me show you how we move it from 13 to 22 by adding 11. There's some trickery in that maths, but I'll explain it all. Firstly, the four solid colors, Biskra that you saw in the Melwood range, our tan beige sort of Sahara sand color. Karaz, our duck shell green coming into Supergloss. Dunblane Gray, our medium gray, the Goldilocks gray into Supergloss. And of course, Kalapana, the carbon into Supergloss. So those four solid colors all coming into the, the gloss range. And really, they look beautiful in gloss. They just have this, this, this rich depth to them. Exciting. What you don't see there, Pico White. Why not? Well, when we put board through the glossing process, the resin that we put onto the surface has a warming effect. It tinges the color slightly. Now, if we were to put Pico White into the process, the end result would look very similar to Summer White. So there was no sense in duplicating Summer White and Pico White, and they're almost identical. So we said, Summer White's established in the range, let's leave it alone, and let's just leave Pico White in the Mellowood range. And that's why you don't see Pico White coming through here. Two stones, really exciting. You know, again, we've been looking for some interesting products, like I said, you know, not just more of the same. So really exciting stuff here with, with Azana and Caldera. So Azana on our left, this sample you're looking at is a 900 by 900 piece. It's, so that vein that you're looking at is it's not like a little vein all over the surface. It's, it's quite big and bold and there's big, beautiful open areas of white in between. It's based on a classic sort of white color cutter marble. And that's Azana. So in, in gloss, it's got this really sort of beautiful depth to it. What I love about this, 
when I say I love it, you must understand I have to, when, we, when we're picking colors, there's a lot of work in the background with the printers pushing colors in different directions so we can get to just that right color at the end. And marbles are deceptively tricky. You can say to the printer, well, just make that vein a little bit darker, please. And it's incredible with the printing process. When you do that, the black ink goes all over the place and suddenly the white areas become too dirty. And so to find the, the way of making the vein nice and bold, but keeping the white areas clean is quite some process. But I'm really, really pleased with the results here. So again, a lot of work keeping that gray nice and neutral so it doesn't become a greeny tinge when you, when you two-tone it. On our right, Caldera, black marble. Just this rich, opulent, bold design, really. And in gloss, got such a nice depth to it. Really exciting pattern here. So really, really pleased about these. Overseas, when we were traveling around in 2018, 2019, looking at new designs, a lot of stone starting to be used, not just as splashbacks, but door fronts and draw fronts. We're seeing island units. We're seeing sort of vanities done in it. So it's just being used in a lot more applications. And we really wanted to have an exciting option in terms of that. So I'm really, really pleased with how these two have come out. And now, the last thing to put into the super gloss range, we needed some wood grains. So in November, we asked our production team to just do a little experiment and put the five super textured designs, the premier wood grains, through the gloss line and let's have a look at the result. So they did that for us. They popped them up against the wall in the warehouse and they called us to come and have a look. I was actually blown away. It was incredible what the gloss does to these wood grains. It's just beautiful. I'm talking about Calais. So it's a whitewash. You expect it to be rustic, a little bit textured, a bit rough maybe, a bit matte. Suddenly in gloss, that beige grain really just popping out and it just looks so much more deeper, really exciting. Then we have Cambridge, my personal favorite. I couldn't believe this. You know, Cambridge is a really dark wood grain as a super texture. But the gloss just seems to be able to magnify the color and you just get to see so much more color in it. So really just an incredible result. Astana, again, rustic design, expecting it to be in a harder texture, a bit more matte, just gets that elegant and refined look in gloss. Of course, Napoca, one of the designs that have done really well in the super texture, a lot of people excited about Napoca, the gloss helps to elevate that contrast between the dark and the light. And of course, Treviso with those little highlights just popping in the gloss finish. So those five wood grains, unbelievable the result in super gloss. When you get the real samples and you have a look at them, you'll understand what I mean. Just, they look so beautiful. They've got just such a depth, a richness to them. And therein is how we move from 13 designs to 22 by adding 11. We're going to take our two wood grains, American Walnut and Coimbra, and we're going to reclassify them as what we call C category items, which means they become made to order. So they're still available, they're there in the range, but they're just subject to a lead time and a minimum order quantity. But my personal feeling is, this is where at first people might say, oh, but we still need them. I think when you start to see how these five designs look in gloss, very quickly we'll forget about American Walnut and Coimbra and people will gravitate towards these. They are just unbelievable as gloss colors. And I think it's got to do with that boldness. They're quite strong designs and the gloss just really elevating that. So there you have how these 11 designs come together and bring us to 22 in the range. And our final chapter is metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is about exploring, pushing boundaries, discovering the new, embracing change as we have to do now. It's uh, the age for the brave. And the word itself means to not just evolve, but to transform, to become something completely different. And a product of ours that has transformed is Mellowood Supermat. The Supermat trend around for a while. It's a couple of years old, three, four years already. And we saw it coming. We really, really wanted an option on this. And in 2018 at Gallery 2, we launched our Supermat. Really exciting. But of course, very soon we had a limitation on it that the darker colors just, there was, there was the issue on the edge that if you cut the dark board and then you put a matching edge against it, you saw what looked almost like a glue line. And we weren't sure the market was going to accept that. So we put that on hold and we just focused on the lighter colors. We focused on Iceberg White, Cappuccino, Folkestone Gray, and Congo. But that wasn't good enough. We needed an option for dark, intense colors. That's where the market demand was coming from. And since 2018, our production team, manufacturing guys, have been hard at work trying to find us a solution. I'm really amazed at what they've been able to do. So we've invested a whole lot of technology and money into this process. And it's incredible. You go to Boxburg now where the product is made. 
and we've got these nitrogen tanks on the outside of the warehouse and there's vapors coming off of them. There's light, these pipes going into the warehouse. It's piping this nitrogen in there and it's creating, the nitrogen creates an inert blanket, this inert atmosphere around the line. So as the board is passing through, nothing in the atmosphere is affecting the surface, passes it through. Then we have these Exama lamps, these basically laser beams that are set up on the line. And they bounce this laser into the very top surface of the board. And what that does is it activates the top surface. It creates these micro ripples, tiny little mountains and valleys all the way across the surface. And that's how we create the matte effect. So when you're dealing with glass, you've got like an almost mirror-like flat surface. When you're dealing with matte, you've got these tiny little peaks and valleys, and they help to scatter light. So as the light sort of hits them, it bounces light in all different directions, and you don't get a reflection back at you. And that's the matte effect. Now, when they were busy commissioning this line, they called me to say, come down to the light, come and have a look at the sample of what they produced and just see if I think it's in the right direction. As a reference point, they had other samples from some leading European suppliers who are using the, the same sort of technology. Just as a, as a guideline to say, that's what Europe's producing. Are we happy with the same sort of results? It may sound like I'm overselling it, but when you get a real sample and you feel it, you'll understand what I mean. If world class is here, the production team of produce something over here. It's just incredible what they've been able to produce. And I'll explain to you how we measure that to actually verify that we have created something over here. I'll get into that now. Of course, we're going to provide it, sort of supply it with that protective film on it. So when it gets to site, it looks as good as it's meant to. There in itself is another trick we had to overcome. It's interesting, you know, when, when you're dealing with, with gloss, the surface is completely smooth. And so any, well, not any, but a protective film doesn't need to have that much tackiness to it to stay stuck onto the surface. When you're dealing with matte, the protective film is only touching those little tips of the mountain peaks. So it's not touching a whole lot of the board. And if you use the same protective film that you use on gloss on the matte product, in about two or three hours of it standing vertically, the, the film just gently falls away, it just falls off. So we had to find the right kind of protective film that stays stuck to that, which we've done. Of course, we're supplying the product with the matching decor on the reverse side, and that'll be in a natural touch finish. So when you open the cover doors, you don't get any sheen on the inside too. And fabrication. A couple of people concerned like, what's fabrication gonna be like? This is made on the exact same line that we make super gloss. So the fabrication is identical to the super gloss fabrication. Just as long as we follow the provisions, close attention to detail. Really have to focus on the details here. You can't, it's not another, like a regular product. It, you need a little bit more attention here clean environment really that that is one of the biggest things is make sure it's as clean as possible extraction working fine no dust lying around it all that stuff goes towards contaminating the finish and of course most importantly a strong and strict regime of blade sharpening really keeping your saw blades the cutters on pre-millers and, and all that sort of stuff on the edge banders they have to be extremely sharp and that's how we get the best finish out of gloss and out of matte so what does metalwood super matte offer us Anti-fingerprint surface, unbelievable. I've, I've got a black sample here that was delivered to me. You can just sort of keep on touching that and you won't see fingerprints, okay? So day-to-day anti-fingerprint, incredible. Now, again, if you're eating KFC and wipe your hands on the cupboard door, well, I can't help you there because you're just transferring oil from the KFC to the cupboard door. That's not a fingerprint anymore. That's just oil stains. So that's not gonna help. But just opening, closing cupboards on a regular day, you'll see just how anti-fingerprint the surface is. Ultra matte. I told you that we had exceeded you know, European output. We take a spectrometer and we use a spectrometer to measure the light being reflected off the surface. So on a gloss board, when you bounce light off of it, you're expecting these high gloss points. So at 65 degrees of light, the gloss is up at a, the gloss points are up at 100, and that's a really good gloss. We take the same spectrometer, bounce light off of the matte surface, and suddenly at 65 degrees, you're down to less than 2.9 gloss points, which is incredible. That's it's like a black hole. It's almost sucking the light into it. So all the light's being scattered. Nothing's coming back in a uniform direction. And why I say it was better, because the European samples we had were all around the five gloss point level. So we we're already at 2.9 gloss point level. So really just an incredible, incredible finish. And my favorite part about it is the texture it produces is the soft, silky, smooth feeling. It's, it's really a, a tactile product. You just can't help yourself. You just kind of keep wanting to stroke it. And then you know, I often find myself just you know, rub it on your cheek a little bit. It's incredible, just such a beautiful, beautiful product. Again, like I've mentioned a couple of times, locally manufactured, it's made on our line in Boxburg where we make super gloss. And of course, it's gonna be that same dependable quality and consistency 
from PG Boss. So most importantly, available in intense dark colors. So this is an age for the brave. Make the change and let's have a look at what we bring into the super matte range. We're going to bring in our two stones. In gloss, they are deep, they're rich. They've got this, this depth going on. In matte, they take on this beautiful sort of refined and elegant quality. There's such a naturalness, a zana, this clean white and with that soft texture, it really just looks like this beautiful natural stone. And of course, caldera, it's toned down from in gloss where it's a bit bolder. Here, it's got a more refined feel to it. So it just looks incredible. So the two stones, Azana, Caldera, both coming into the matte range. Now we're going from four solid colors as we were doing in our original super matte. In our new and improved super matte, we're going to do eight solid colors. Firstly, iceberg white. It's a staple, it's a given, we need it. Congo, it's been doing really well in our current super matte offering, so we're keeping that into the new super matte. Carrez, again, one of those stylish and elegant colors, beautiful, the duck shell green into super matte. And of course, Dunblane Gray, our medium gray that's available. Here's where it really gets exciting. The colors that people have been asking us for. We're going to do petrol blue into super matte. We're going to do super black into super matte. We're going to do color pana in super matte. And of course, we're going to offer storm gray in super matte. And I can tell you, I got some samples delivered to me, the, the first of the new samples we're doing with these in them. The edge is beautiful, crisp and clean, really a nice sharp edge, so incredible. There you have it. That's it, it might have sold, sound like I was selling it to you, but when you see the real sample, you'll understand what I mean. We have all our colors. There's our four chapters. And just before we move on to the last section, I'll just kind of summarize it for us again, so we know what, we take, what we're getting, because it's a lot to take in. In Mellowood, we're launching the seven new designs. There's the two exotics and the five solid colors. Into the Formica Lifestyle range, we're doing the four worktops, two gloss, two textured. Into the super gloss range, we're doing the 11 new designs. There's the two stones, the four solid colors, and the five premier wood grains. And of course, into super matte, two stones, eight solid colors. And there you have everything that's brand new coming to you from PG Bison in 2020. Now, a lot to take in, as I said. So how do we sell that to our customers and how do we inspire everybody and let our staff know what's happening? We've designed these digital tools for you. So as with our Gallery 2 launch and our Gallery 1 launch, we put together our inspiration guide, our Gallery 3 guide, and this contains all the new and exciting colors. So you'll see spreads like this. You're not going to see Vancouver maple. You're not going to see Bergen mahogany in there. None of the older colors, just the stuff we've launched in 2018 and 2020. And of course, we've got spreads where we're showing people and inspiring them how to use the colors, where, where to use them in sort of applications. Really just a beautiful brochure. This is a PDF and it's going live on our website, so you'll be able to download it from there. Following on from that, some technical work. So in 2019, we did some market research and a lot of the customers sort of saying, you know, the products are quite technically heavy. There's a lot to understand and you know, where to use it, where not to use it, how to do it, how not to do it. So with all that technicality and all the jargon around it, how can we make it more accessible? How do we make it easier to understand? So we have put together the complete guide and covers everything from where PG operates and what we do and our responsibilities to products we manufacture currently and of course some sort of technical guidelines. Great document, really love it, but we're not going to launch it just yet. We're holding this thing back until July because there are a couple of points in here which we want to refine before we actually put it out there. But all the work that we've already done on the products is really good stuff and we don't want to hold that back. So we're going to release them as individual chapters right now. And we have the Mellowood Supermat Guide, the Mellowood Guide, the Ready to Spray Guide, the Formica Lifestyle Guide. Each product that we have has its own guide. Inside of there, you're going to have spreads like these, just high level to tell you using icons, how is the product made, the specifications it conforms to, again, little icons to explain where is it good to be used, is it vertical, is it a horizontal, is it interior, all that sort of stuff explained. We've got generic names, for instance, not everybody knows that Superwood is MDF, is medium density fiberboard. So that's explained. Then there's a high level write up about the product. And of course, a little summarized availability table. Each product has a page like that. Inside of the big brochure, when it comes out, you'll see sections like this. Again, just dealing with the technicalities, you know, how wide should the pilot hole be? How close to the edge of the board can you screw a chipboard screw in? What sort of blade should you use for super gloss? All of that's contained in these pages. And for the decorative products, 
similar sort of idea as the more commodity products. Again, using icons to explain how it's made, the specifications it conforms to, icons to show where it can be used, and the write-up, the availability table. But what we've also included is a thumbnail gallery, a really quick reference guide to what's in the range from a visual point of view. So if someone tells you, sorry, PG doesn't make Aquila in Formica Lifestyles anymore, you can check on this. And if it's in there, you know it's being made, just call another stockist, it's in stock somewhere. So that's the idea behind this, is just to give you that one-stop quick visual reference to what's in each of the ranges. And there you have those. So those are being put up onto our website as we speak. And they'll be available for you to download and, and keep and use. Our website's been refreshed, all brand new look and feel. It's amazing over time how things just sort of fall away or get lost in the background. So we've just rejigged it to make sure that the color range is easy to access. We've got the blog up on the front page so that there's new and, and interesting content coming through all the time. The latest availability lists, the technical brochures, all there to be able to download. And of course, a link to our design tool, which I'll talk a little bit now in another slide, but just a brand new look and feel there. Of course, if you're looking at the new colors, you can go to the website. All of the new colors are already loaded and you can see them there. Social media, it's a vital part of business these days. So we've been doing a lot of work here, just making sure there's some inspirational imagery and some easy to use reference guides. All of that is available. And if you want to share it with your customers, just get in touch with us and we'll gladly share it with you to pass on and inspire your customers. So all the digital media. And of course, the kitchen design tool, Lauren, who's with us today, really been working hard with our developers on this, creating a brand new and exciting platform, new functionality, you know, you can get in there, you can design your sort of kitchen space. And of course, totally free. You just register on the website and you can, can use it as much as you want. An ideal opportunity right now where a lot of people are not moving around too much just to go and play around and design your ideal space totally for free. And finally, on the digital side, just this is one thing we were able to get done properly before lockdown. We know that 3D rendering is critical. It's, it's, it's the way everyone designs these days. and there's nothing worse than, you know, you want to render the image and you get these little tiled versions of the color all over the place. So we were able to shoot full nine by six boards. That on your screen right now is Caldera as a full nine by six, 2.7 by 1.8 meters of board. That's been done. There is a Zana. You can just see now what I'm talking about in terms of the vein over 2.7 by 1.8 meters. And there is Stone Town. So that's all been shot. That's already been given over to the, the, the 3D software companies. And they are all busy, hard at work, getting it ready and into their system. So you'll be able to access that and design and use the new colors in your renders. So we've spoken to CompuSoft. We've dealt with Maxima. We've, we've done Articad. We're also uh, with Cabinet Vision. There is, there's a whole bunch of them out there. And we're working with all of them. On SketchUp, our colors are already loaded up on SketchUp. So the library is there. The, in the 3D warehouse, you can go and get those colors and use them. So there's all our digital tools. The last, last, last thing I'm going to tell you about, of course, Nothing sells the product quite like a physical sample, and we know how important these are. So we've had to redesign our sample box, and here they are in front of us now, the brand new Premier Black Box and the Red and White Millwood Box, looking beautiful, really looking like one big family. We've even cleaned up the Formica Life Cell swatch set, so it looks identical to these. Another victim of COVID. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a shot, a uh, photograph of it before the, the presentation, so, but you'll see it when it comes out. It looks amazing. So there we have these brand new boxes coming to the market. And how we've been able to pack more into the sample boxes, we're moving from a nine mil to a six mil thick sample, so we can pack more in, but we're giving you more sample size. So in the old Mellowood box, we had a 130 by 90 size sample. We're now going to a 180 millimeter by 118 wide sample. So really just, you get to see a whole lot more of that design. And in the premier box where we had a 145 by 145 square, we're now going all the way up to 225 by 148 wide. So really just a lot more to look at. Of course, solid colors, we're cutting them in half just to pack more in. Because if you look at Congo this size or that size, you know, so it doesn't, Congo looks like Congo. So really it's okay with the solid colors. There you have our samples. We know how important sample boxes are to the market. We are fully aware. It's, it's not like we're trying to hold on to them and say, hey, no, we're not going to send them out. We want as many boxes out there as possible. But where we are, obviously we had a plan and our plan was we would have launched in the middle of April. We would have been on the road and, and traveling around the country. And we went into lockdown sort of the end of March and we lost three weeks. And of course, coming out of that and moving into the level four of lockdown, we were only, well, our sampling companies had to start up at about 
30% of capacity. So they had to lock down just like everybody else. They closed down three weeks before our, our launch date and they've opened up at 30% capacity. So we've got them, two companies, in fact, working around the clock. I was just on the phone to the one then today and really he's pushing hard, trying to get as many samples out as possible. So we are at the moment getting our first batches of sample boxes ready and they are going to be distributed throughout the country. We also have to be aware that our courier services are also working at a limited capacity, and so it may not happen as fast as we like it, but we are really trying to push this as much as we can and get samples to you. If you need samples, and I know you need samples, just get onto our website, go and find your regional offices, contact details for PG Bison, let them know, contact them and say, I need sample boxes, let them get your name and number, so as soon as they've got samples available, they can bring them to you. So there you have it. And with that, I have to say thank you very much. I'm going to hand it back over to Justin, but really, really do appreciate your time on this Friday afternoon for coming and listening to us. Thank you for joining us. And over to Justin, who's going to take you through some Q&A now. Yeah, so, Jace, thanks very much for that. Uh, I think there's some really exciting uh, products coming and colors coming. I think the colors are really on point if you look at international trends. And I think they're also suited to the African market as well. I know you do a lot of work to ensure that we don't uh, just look at a Eurocentric view, that it talks to what's needed within the African market and that. So that's something that we always try and focus on from our side. Uh, I'm not gonna keep you much longer from a Friday perspective and that, just to tell you all of the, uh, the questions asked is, is the product available? Uh, yes, all of the products that Jason's presented to you, color-wise and that is all available in the country. PG Bison's got stock of it and that. A lot of the big resellers have already ordered stock this week. They've been part of these webinars. They've been excited about and they have placed orders with us. It'll take about, let's call it uh, seven, seven to 14 days to start getting the stock into the market. So please contact your specific uh, resellers that you deal with or wholesalers that you deal with. Ask them if they're stocking the PG Bison products and that. If they're not, ask them to stock it. If you can't get anything, then please contact the local PG Bison sales office and that, and I'm sure my teams in the various regions would be able to point you in the right direction to who is currently stocking the product and that. From an edging perspective, that's a question that's always asked, is there edging available? In the run-up to this event, we would have partnered with Upper Edge uh, in this event and that, uh, and they would have been our partner that we would have got on the road with. And I can assure you, I've spoken to Larry Pillman, and all the stock is in the country, and they have the product available, so please give them a call. We have also worked with the other big edging suppliers in the market and they have also confirmed that the edging is available and in stock. As I always say though, if uh, you find somebody and they don't have stock, find a competitor. I'm sure they'll be able to supply you. Uh, from a names perspective, we always could ask the question, how did Jason pick these names? They're difficult to, to pronounce and that. Uh, we do a lot of work with our IP attorneys, our intellectual property attorneys. As you can imagine, PG Boston invests a lot of money in the marketing tools, and we want to make sure that we can protect our brands and our trademarks. And we also want to make sure that when you go into the market and you ask for Catalan or one of our products, that you get a genuine PG Boston product. All of the products are marked PG Boston on the edges of the board or on the sides of the board. So be sure to ask for a genuine PG Boston product. We would like to be part of the solution. As we said, we do know that there are these tough out there, that the market's trading hard on that. Please use us to help promote your businesses. If you're doing great work out there with PG Bison products, we would love to see the images. We'd like to get information on those projects and we'd like to feature it on our website. If you go to look at our new proof website, it really looks great. We've got a great gallery section there. We've already got products or projects that certain customers have given us information on. So use our tools, use our platforms in that. We want to feature great work with PG Bison products. So obviously that's the one, one thing is we'll have a look at the images, make sure it is our product before we do feature it. And then we place it onto our websites. We'll give you recognition. And as we said, I think that will help uh, generate a lot of inquiries for you and your business out there. So on our website, there's a web link or email address that says marketing at pgbison.co.za. Uh, pop an email through to us and let's have a look at the great work that you're doing there and let's be part of exposing a broader market to great work done with PG Bass and products and that. It's also a good time uh, if you are getting 30% of your staff back to work to be looking at upgrading showrooms and that. Please contact the PG Bass regional representatives. As I said, the details are on the website if you don't have them. 
Uh, give them a call, ask them to come out and see you. Our guys are meeting with customers that are happy to meet with them. Obviously, we make sure they've got the right PPE and all that kind of stuff in place. But it's a great time to be thinking about renovating showrooms and updating showrooms and that. As you know, PG Bison it will look at supplying products as long as we can feature our brand. And that product that we supply, we always say it's for worktops and for door frontals. We don't supply products for carcasses and all that. But uh, we'd like to be part of updating showrooms and ensuring the showrooms are ready to go when people come back. I think the antibacterial products are a great product. It's the right time for the market. People are hypersensitive on bugs and bacteria and everything else. And it is a product that we've been working on for the last four years. And it's just opportune that we've had it ready to go to market now. But do be patient with the resellers. Uh, they do have stock. We have a lot of stock currently in our system. And this product will feed in over the next three to four months. Uh, I see there's two new questions that's come through on the question line. Uh, the one question is, where exactly can I find the color range on SketchUp for rendering an ad? I don't know, Jason, if you want to answer that. I know we're going to be featuring a video on our website soon on how to do that. Courtney, you just managed to find it. She says, no, okay, you found, found range. it. Okay, but guys. It's a yeah, 3D warehouse. It's, it's there. Um, and we, we are sending out a video link next week to show you how to access those colors in the, in the 3D warehouse. Yeah, so we'll have a little how-to video there. It's great to see we've got the team from Tusilago Kitchens in Harare, uh, a good customer of PG Bison. So welcome. Thanks for joining us uh, today. It's great. These webinars have been really phenomenal, been in our ability to really touch a deeper base of customers in it. So once again, from PG Bison's side, uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for all the support that you've given us in the past. And we look forward to working with you and really building this industry again into the future.